Hey yo, Antonio. About 18 months ago, we set out on a mission to see what it would be like to have myopia, also known as nearsightedness. Seeing this for ourselves has been incredibly insightful, not only because it created an avenue where individuals suffering from myopia could easily express their perception of the world, but also because those that do not suffer from myopia, including myself, could now fully understand the daily struggles of those that do. Since then, a lot of you have reached out to me via the comment section requesting that I cover more severe cases of myopia, and so I've been brainstorming ways to bring this to life. For each of the following examples, we'll be comparing mild cases of myopia, starting at minus 1, and progressively increase the severity all the way up to minus 10. But without further ado, let's get right into the comparisons. Our first example takes place during a cloudy day in Adelaide City. We have with us a mural that is spray painted on the wall. If you've watched the Netflix series Arcane or play the video game League of Legends, then you'll recognize this character instantly. Her name is Jinx and she is personally my favorite character in the whole series. And just for a bit of reference, the wall is about 24 meters from where I'm filming this. After a short walk around the city, we find ourselves in Chinatown. There is a red gate that welcomes us, but since I do not speak Chinese, I have no idea what it says. Now, at this point you might be wondering, wait a minute, this doesn't seem right. Surely a person with 7 diopters of myopia should be seeing things a lot blurrier than what is shown here. And to that I would say, yes, you are correct. Sort of. You see, since we're outdoors, there is abundant lighting available. And as a natural response to this, our pupils will constrict. I have set the aperture setting on my camera to f22 which means that things at multiple distances will be clearer than if I was to set the setting at, let's say, f2.8. This is similar to how our pupils behave when during the day, the blur that is created by myopia is not as bad as what you would see at nighttime. To demonstrate this, I have moved to a car park where there is not as much light available, and I've turned the aperture setting on my camera to f2.8. This is reminiscent to when our pupils dilate when it's dark, to allow more light to enter the eye. When our pupils are wider, the blur created by myopia becomes a lot more apparent. Since we're indoors, let's see how this would play out in an artificially lit setting. I've kept the aperture at f2.8 since this gave me the best exposure, which exemplifies the fact that artificial lighting is nowhere near as bright as natural lighting.
The next example I have for you is very cool. In previous videos of myopia, I explained that we can use mathematics to figure out how far an individual with myopia can see. This is the distance at which things still remain clear, but any further than that distance, the image starts to become blurry. This can be done by taking the reciprocal of their optical prescription and calculating what is known as their far point. The setup goes like this. I have a book that is placed about 6 meters from my camera, and as we go through the varying severities of myopia, I will bring the book closer until the words become clear. At minus 7, we can see that the book needs to be placed very close to the camera. 14 centimeters to be exact. And this is how it looked from my perspective. We go back outside where there is a lot more light available. And you can see that the increase in blur caused by the different severities of myopia are a lot more subtle than if we were indoors. I've also had a few people request that I make a video covering the opposite of myopia, which is hyperopia. And trust me, I want to see that video just as much as you do. But the reality is that simulating hyperopia is a lot more difficult as it involves the careful synchronization of my camera's focusing system to replicate our eyes accommodation. Now, this is not to say that I won't make a video, I definitely will, but just give me a bit of time so I can figure out the perfect way of recreating that perception. But for now, I hope you enjoy the scenes around Adelaide City with different levels of myopia. I have many more great videos to come, so feel free to drop a like to show support, and remember to subscribe so that you do not miss out on future videos. They call Adelaide the city of churches. I don't know why, but they do. So I thought it would be appropriate to show the next example in front of the cathedral located in the city. It's cool to see the details slowly start to disappear as we go through the increasing severities. Hopefully the examples that I've shown you today have given you a better understanding of what it would be like to have severe levels of myopia. And thank you to those who have suggested it. If you have any other suggestions for future videos, then feel free to drop a comment down below. But having said that, if you've learned something new or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.